here I've got the Octave Cat. And this one is the Series Revision Model, or the SRM. It's from 1977, and it's the second of three versions that were produced. They were all slightly different, the most obvious difference being the looks. Confusingly, the original had the more modern look with red and white sliders and white sides, and the later models, like the one I've got here, had wooden sides and all silver sliders. Here's an original advert with this model on the left, and on the right is the single VCO version called the Kitten. This model introduced an LFO delay, and the later SRM2 from 1978 also has the addition of an extra sync mode and separate CV inputs for the two duophonic notes. The SRM2 is what the Cherry Audio plugin and the Behringer are based on, and again, confusingly, they have used the original styling that's got the red and white caps on the sliders. The best way to check on the front panel is to look for the LFO delay slider here. If it's just got these two switches next to each other, it's an older model. And also the SRM2 has got different sync modes. So the sync switch here has got three settings, not two. And also it says it on the back. This one and most of the early models have got the CV in and out called Master and Slave. Don't think you'd get away with that terminology these days. And these need the 6mm TRS to a 3.5mm TR cables. So that's stereo to mono. And I don't know if this is a straight up stereo to mono cable, but you can buy them from Kenton. I think they're around 30 or 40 pound. And I don't think you can talk about the history of these without mentioning the ARP Odyssey. There was the threat of a lawsuit apparently, and that had something to do with the keyboard mechanism or the keyboard circuits or something like that. But on the face of it, superficially, they do look quite similar, especially the envelopes, because we've got an ADSR and we've got an AR, just like you get on the Odyssey. And it's just like you get on the Odyssey, we can loop these so we can repeat them gated. So when you hit a key or automatically, so it'll just repeat, repeat. Bit like a latch plus of course we've got the two oscillators one of which can be detached from the keyboard and that can go all the way down to 0.2 hertz so that's lfo rates and we've got sync plus we've got duophonic mode you can do frequency modulation between the oscillators and we've got a drone mode as well if we bypass the vca again you can do all that on the other side but like i say these are quite superficial because there are a fair few differences on this for example we've got two sub oscillators we can mix different waveforms so we can have seven different waveforms playing at the same time. And you can modulate VCO2 with VCO1, and you can modulate VCO1 with VCO2. So you can modulate VCO1 with VCO2 at the same time you're modulating VCO2 with VCO1, which you can't do on the Odyssey. But then the Odyssey does have ring mod, and it does have a high pass filter. But all in all, they are different synths. It's not like the cat's a cheap version of the Odyssey. It was cheaper to buy in the day, but um, it's definitely its own synth and it's definitely got its own sound. And before I get into it, I just want to play you this tone and you're not going to hear a thing unless you whack up your subwoofers, but the bass on this is incredible. And that's probably the easiest 808 style tone I've ever created on any synth. All that is, is a load of resonance and the filter tuned. That's it. Nothing else happening. Fabulous that, isn't it? Of course, if you're listening through your phone, you won't have heard a thing, but believe me, it's thick, it's juicy, and the windows are rattling. And also, the speakers are having real difficulties dealing with that, because down here, we're at around 30 hertz. But yeah, and that's why people love this thing. The bass on it's incredible and it's definitely 100% got its own character. So let's uh, start off really then by taking a look at the oscillators and then going through section by section. Starting at the top, we've got the frequency controls, got fine control and we've got coarse control. And this goes all the way down to 0.2 Hertz, as I said earlier. So that's definitely LFO and we can bring the keyboard in or out. So if we disconnect the keyboard, we can have it as an LFO and it's not modulated by whatever you're playing. We've got the poly mode, which is geophonic mode. We'll play all this in a second. Finally, on the bottom, these sliders, and these are the four different waveforms we get. Sawtooth. Then we've got a triangle. Over here, we've got plus and minus two octaves. So nice and high, watch your ears. And then we move over to the pulse. 
We can adjust the pulse width of that using this knob here. And then we've got the sub. That's a square and that's an octave below. So you can get really interesting looking waveforms and lots of harmonics in there. And then we've got the modulation settings. These are the modulation amounts and these are the sources. So here I've been playing with DC, so it's just a direct voltage. Put to LFO. Here's the LFO here. And you can hear that's waiting to come in. That's because we've got the delay. Up to five seconds. And then we can modulate the pitch using the LFO as well. That's a sine or a square. And we've got sample and hold. Sample and hold, I'll show them in a second, but we've got a choice of noise or VCO1. A little bit like you get on the Odyssey, but not quite the same. We don't have that sample and hold mixer on this. And then we've got the ADSR envelope. The AR envelope. And then VCO2, so this is cross-modulation. And that's not doing anything because we've not got anything on VCO2, it's not making any sound yet, so. Instant massive fat tones. And a little bit out of tune, that's where the fine tune comes in a little bit handy. Just that, isn't it? Let's try a bit of duophonic action. And one thing you really need to know about actually with VCO1 is that there's a VCO1 audio switch up here. If you turn that off, you don't hear VCO1 at all. Which really confused me when I first got my hands on one of these because I thought it was knackered and it wasn't. It was just me being an idiot. But the reason you can do that is so that you can use it as an LFO and because you've got to have the sliders up to get the modulation from it, maybe you don't want to hear it as well. So let's have a little play with using it as an LFO. So we'll take the keyboard control off. We'll modulate oscillator two with it. So you can have all sorts of crazy LFO shapes. And you can use it as a sort of pseudo sequencer. If we look at the sub and the pulse here, let's try and get something interesting happening. Sort of interesting. I'll then try and tune it. So you can do lots of strange effects with that. And it's actually in the original manual as a little tip. It takes a lot of playing with to get something useful out of it. That's not a bad little sequence. I think that brings me to the end of VCO1. I think we've covered everything in there. Uh, let's take a look at VCO2 then, shall we? And VCO2 is very similar to VCO1. We'll start off again with a sawtooth. It's going out of tune, it obviously needs something replacing in here. Let's listen to the pulse. And this is a square, you can't modulate that. And then we've got the sub, which is an octave below. 
And that's all three. And the modulation options on this are the same as on VCO1, except we don't have the pulse width modulation. But on this, we have a sync. Let's sync oscillator one to oscillator two. Let's listen to oscillator one. It's not the smoothest of sinks, really dirty. Let's modulate that with an envelope. Let's use the ADSR envelope. Let's try that a couple of octaves higher. <laughs> As I say, it's sort of dirty. It's not smooth in any way, that. Quite nasty, isn't it? It's nice set. A couple of octaves lower. And that brings us over to the filter. On this, we've got a 24 dB low pass. I think it's an SSM on this one. Now the resonance on this is nuts. I'm going to whack it up now. I will turn the levels down in the mix, but do watch your ears. It stops there around 10 kilohertz, but we can add to that with modulation. So if we go to the AR envelope, for example, then off it goes to wherever. The modulation we've got on the filter is the same as for VCO2. So we've got the LFO and then we've got the ADSR, the AR and VCO1. So let's do a little bit of frequency modulation with VCO1. So let's turn that down. Naughty that, isn't it? I'm not sure if that sounds broken or if it sounds alive, but that sounds nuts, doesn't it? Let's do a bit of cross-modulation and VCO1 with VCO2 and try not to just make completely mental sounds. Maybe let's try and do some more standard sounds. Let's try and do some nice bass tones. Really nice that for a single oscillator. Let's add the second. Maybe a sub.
Those envelopes are lovely and snappy, aren't they? Let's play with the repeat on them. So bring it on to gated. And you can put that on auto as well, so it latches. Let's have a look at the sample and hold now. And this is a little bit more complex than most sample and hold circuits because we have the option of noise or VCO1. So with noise, it's completely random. But if we start sampling VCO1, we're now sampling a waveform, so it's not random. So that's the sawtooth that we're using as the input for the sample and hold. And you can definitely hear it being a sawtooth. Or maybe the triangle. So that's another nice little effect. What else haven't we looked at? Maybe the noise. It's white noise, but it's nice and bright, this. I know noise is noise, but that's quite a nice noise. As I say, nice and bright. And then finally, I think the only thing I've not really looked at or touched on um, is keyboard control of the filter. Turn it all the way clockwise and get a volt per octave so we can keep things nicely in tune. Having had a really good play with the Behringer versus the Cat, they are very similar, except for sync. The sync on the Behringer just doesn't sound like it does on the Cat. And I did notice this in my last review, I did these two, but one of the cats was on the other side of the Atlantic, so it was a bit difficult to do, but having them next to each other. And bring in Oscillator 2. They, these will be out of tune, they're meant to be. Still sounds the same, identical. And tentacle and nasty, but we put sync on. That sounds ace, doesn't it? on this just doesn't do it and we can change around with the tunings and stuff to try and get things a little bit dirtier but we end up getting these like weird crunches actually that's that's pretty good but it's not that Same over here. Similar, but it's not quite as, um, it's a bit smoother, I think, on the, on the original. And it just seems to have more depth. I don't know what it is. So it's brighter, it jumps out here, got more punch. Just not quite the same. But other than that, I'd say they were pretty bang on, to be honest. So I'm not going to show you it being the same. Or maybe shall I just show you the filter as well, just to show you they are similar. So watch your ears. I'm going to whack up this, um, this cue. And that just goes super low. So it does all the same stuff that the original does. And here's another little difference I've found when playing with the filter and getting them both exactly the same. Or as same as you can, really. When you've got the static tone. You can get them super close.
and this has got keyboard control on it it's got some ar envelope so it's not just a simple patch but if i start playing it it's got that little quack at the start of the tone and that's because the ar envelope the attack phase doesn't close all the way to zero so you get that little transient plop i'm not getting that on the berenger so if i turn this all the way down to zero it's different so trying to add a little bit of attack That's the shortest amount of attack I can do. Which isn't as snappy as this. And that could be something to do with the age of the cat I've got here. This might have just got a little bit slower than it was originally, so you've got that little bit of attack where you wouldn't have got it when you first got out the box. But... And you know, both the pairing is not doing it. And maybe that's why people, when they've got the vintage synth and they get something like a new clone, they think it doesn't sound anything like mine. I can't do that little trick I can do on mine. Because, well, number one, that's not su super snappy. That is it there from zero to the first, to the first change in the tone, which suggests it could be digital that to me. But actually, it's because the reason why it doesn't sound the same is almost because the cat has now sort of gone so sloppy it can't get to zero attack, whereas the Beringer can. But it is a difference, and it might well be this is the tone of the cat, and this is a thing they did. So, tone-wise, I can get it really close. But once you start playing with it, you do find differences as well. Let's get something in harmonic. Same on both. Let's turn the audio from VCO1 off. So just listen to VCO2 and then let's add VCO1 as the modulation source. Try that on the Behringer. Doesn't go quite as high, does it? So full FM on the Behringer is about two thirds full on the original. So the original can go further. You're getting more on the Behringer this time. So take it all back, it's just slightly different. Maybe you get similar differences with two old synths. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. It doesn't feel like it. It just feels like the uh, the Behringer is slightly different. And again, this could be because this is a series revision model two, and the original is the series revision model one. But I don't think so. So you're not going to be able to match a patch from the original directly on the Behringer. Some things I think you're going to get, and some things you're not. But the overall feel and the overall way you play with it is obviously the same. There you have it, the Octave Cat. Um, a little example there, uh, perhaps, of why vintage synths can be so annoying, because this one really does need to go in and have a little bit of TLC. So I hope, um, notwithstanding the fact it's a bit knackered, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me over on Patreon. This channel is supported by YouTube ads and my wonderful patrons. So if you pop over there, it says patreon.com slash starskycar. And maybe for the price of a dodgy coffee a month, you can get access to patches, samples, tutorials, and extra bits and bobs. 
Also, do take a look at my Starsky Car website. There's patches, there's samples, and all that sort of stuff to buy. There's some free stuff as well, but it's always nice if people download even the cheaper sample packs because every little helps. Anyway, thanks for staying to the very end, and I will see you next time.